My name is Jennifer Smolik, and I'm so pleased to be here representing Barry College among such um, inspirational people. Um, I'd like to introduce you to myself as of September 30th, 2011. I'm like an anxious mess, <laughs> and I'm really shy. So, um, but I was trying my best to make small changes in my life to be more green and try to just implement little things that I can do. Um, but what Project Green Challenge really taught me was that being green is not about just um, making changes in your own life. It's really about spreading the message. And that's what we really need to focus on. So after Project Green Challenge, I'm able to expand um, my abilities to be able to convey this message of the importance of um, being more sustainable and transitioning from conventional to conscious. So Project Green Challenge taught me a lot of different ideas that I had never considered before, such as the cradle to cradle concept. It's not something that I had ever heard of before. Um, but I really want to look into how we can incorporate this um, concept into classes at school, like to teach people how to think outside the box and be innovators in the way that we develop products, not just how we can reuse the products that are already made, but how to just recreate the manufacturing world um, to be more sustainable. People towels have, are, to me, a great um, example of how simple um, innovation can be. This is innovative. It's a towel. You hook it to your backpack. But it's something that you wouldn't think to do necessarily because we're so used to using paper towels. They're there and they're convenient and they're easy and you just throw them away. But why? We don't need to do that. And it's great because um, we're just going back to basics. Like um, what you guys were saying earlier about the, um, the grandmother um, the food, like it's going back to basics. And that's what we really need to focus on as well as like innovating our products that we're making. Um, one of the great resources that I found out about from Project Green Challenge is the Good Guide. And I downloaded it on my iPhone. I have to say it's an obsession now. I scan everything <laughs> just to see what the score is and say like, oh, is there something better out there? Um, and so one of the things that I would eat a lot during Project Green Challenge was Pop-Tarts because <laughs> um, I'd get up in the morning and I'd have to like, I was like, okay, I need to plan my day around Project Green Challenge. <laughs> <laughs> Homework doesn't matter this month. <laughs> um, so I like I, when we did the green, good, we found out about the good guide, I was like, okay, what is this that I'm putting in my body? So I had to look it up. 4.7. And only 2.2 .2 score for health. That is just disgusting. <laughs> that was enough for me to be like, okay, what, scroll down. What are the options? And that's when I found about, out about Nature's Path organic toaster pastries. Um, and I, I, I was like, okay, these are th something that I need to incorporate in my life. But then I really thought about it and I was like, okay, Pop-Tarts are kind of my go-to for when I'm running late or like, you know, I don't have time. Am I really gonna be able to go out to the store and spend real money on these, um, on these food? Um, I thought about, no, I wouldn't do that. I would resort back to the, the Pop-Tarts. So how can I make that not happen? So that's when I had to step outside of my comfort zone, which is, so Project Green Challenge for me was all about stepping way outside my comfort zone, because it's about this big. <laughs> so, um, um, oh, okay, so I had to email, <laughs> sorry. I had to email the, um, um, the supply manager for our campus store, and I wanted to see if we could get these toaster pastries sold at the store. And I was, I was so nervous when I sent this email, so I tried to make it really convincing, and the next day I got an email back, sure, look for it soon. I was like, that was so easy. <laughs> like, why had I not done this before? Why was I even nervous about it? Like, 
It's so easy. So now we sell them at our store, and I could go and get them all the time. <laughs> Yay. Um, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, OK, so project, oh, one of the successful things, project, or one of the successful challenges that I was able to do um, during Project Green Challenge was organize this e-waste collection event. And for me, that was really interesting, too, because we were able to interact with um, the, like, it was only open to various students and faculty and staff, but we were still able to collect 920 pounds of e-waste in about four hours, which was just incredible to me. Um, and we have e-waste drives once a year. Um, and this is about, it's, we have it usually in the spring semester, so this was available in the fall semester. And what that really said to me was that people are going to take advantage of these options if we provide them to them. So if we're able to, um, to have an e-waste drive twice a year, people will take advantage of it, and they will do it. Um, so that was really inspiring for me. And I hope that's something that we can continue to have more of these um, e-waste drives and offer them more often. So Project Green Challenge um, has inspired me to look into other like challenges and um, events that I can try and incorporate on campus. And I found Comp Campus Conservation Nationals, which is an energy challenge for residence halls um, to try and reduce their energy consumption and also water. Um, um, and so that's something that I'm working on developing right now. And what I like about this challenge is that it's going to be very widespread on campus. It's going to really um, impact the students' lives. Um, and also that we have to, I have to put together a focus group to really be able to, um, to organize this event because it's going to be huge. It's three weeks. Um, of trying to reduce your um, consumption, and we have to have events all throughout just to keep the momentum and keep people excited about it. So I want to be able to reach out to people from different aspects of the, um, the college because right now we have like a core environmental science like kind of people that do everything. And that's great, but it's not ideal because we need to get people that are involved in marketing and like other, other aspects of the college, have them come in and share their expertise and just help us to make this the best event that it can be. So, and also, I'm a senior this year. I have four months to be able to take this change that I've um, been able to um, undergo personally and just implement it on campus. So I have to take that and inspire other people to continue to make these changes. Um, and just to sum up, we've been <laughs> learning a lot about eco-heroes. And what is an eco-hero? An eco-hero is somebody that can inspire you to make a change. And I would encourage all of you to consider yourself now as eco-heroes because I know that you're now my eco-heroes because we're all going to be making changes on our campus. And I hope that we can be able to carry that on throughout the rest of our lives. Thank you.